Have you ever started working on code in Visual Studio and then realized you wanted to put your code into a GitHub repo? There's a really easy way to do that built into Visual Studio. Let's see how to do that in this 10 minute training video. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on a technology, but sometimes you just need the quick overview to a topic. That's why I created this 10 minute training series. Be sure to check out the playlist for other 10 minute training videos. Okay, let's go to Visual Studio. Here I have a basic Blazor project. I haven't changed anything yet. It's just a Hello World project, uh, a Blazor web app in .NET 8. But if you look over here in Git changes, there's no, I haven't put this in a, in a Git repository. I have not done anything locally, but I wanna first of all, put it into Git and then put it into GitHub. But there's a one click step to do that. We can just say create Git repository. So we click this button here and we can set things up right in this tool. Now I have my, um, font larger, which way I have to resize this. So you can do local only. So you want to say, you know what, let's just create my GitHub or Git repository locally, and I'll worry about putting it into GitHub later. That's fine. But if you want to do it all in one step, you can go right here to GitHub. Now you can also choose other remote if you have a different uh, remote you want to push it to or Azure DevOps, but we're going to do GitHub today. So I have my local path, which is already pre-filled in for me. And then for my Git ignore template, by default, it chooses Visual Studio as the Git ignore template. That makes sure that we don't upload user specific files that would not be appropriate to put into Git or GitHub. So no EXEs, no DLLs, no um, settings for your local Visual Studio and so on get put into your repository. Now license template, you can choose a license template right here. Um, and if you know which one you want to choose, go for it. If you choose none, just to be clear, when you say no, no license template, that is not saying that people then get access to do whatever they want with your code. It's just the opposite. If you don't put a license on it, they can't do anything with your code. You're saying, I'm not giving you a license to do anything. So just so we're clear there. Now, also, let's add a readme.md file. This is what you would typically do when you first create a GitHub repository on github.com. So you can do that right in the tool. And then for the account, you get to choose which account you want. There's my account and we're gonna choose I am Tim Corey. Repository name, you can change this as well. For example, I prefer to have all lowercase and dashes. So get demo app like so. And then description, that's the, the short description you'll see on GitHub. So this is our demo app to show off how to create a GitHub repo from Visual Studio. All right. And I'm going to check the box to keep it private. All right. So if you want to have your repository be visible by other people, you'd uncheck that box and make it a public repo. But for me, I'll leave it, I'll leave it private, I create and push all in one. And that's going to create my repository. It's going to push two commits. And now we can go into GitHub and look at our repository. Now let's open that up right here and bring it in. And this is our, our whole project. Notice that the solution file is in the correct spot. This is one thing that's kind of tricky to get right when you're doing it manually is sometimes you have everything in a folder. And then inside that folder is your readme and your solution file. And that can be, you know, a problem. You have to, you know, change where your hierarchy is, but it's set up properly. There's our Git attributes, our Git ignore, our solution file, our readme file. That's all been set up. And if we look at commits and look at what we have, we have this commit right here, which adds the Git attributes file, the Git ignore file and the readme file. That's our one commit. And then our next commit is our project files. These are all the ones that were already in our project. So this is our, our template. So it actually creates two different commits, one for setting GitHub up, and then the second one with all of our source code. So that's how to set up your GitHub repository very, very quickly from Visual Studio if you already have code. And 
I'd recommend doing this because if you're working even with practice, if you're working with code, having it in Git will be really helpful for things like rolling back uh, changes or trying things out, creating a new branch and experimenting and then you know either discarding it or merging it back in and so many other things you can do with Git. And it's very quick to do. So if you go to the Git changes tab, you'll see that button here. If you don't already have a Git initialized or if you don't have your um, your branch set up or something like that. So that's how I set it up from Visual Studio into GitHub.